All right, folks. So uh, you get a little bonus bridge this week, and so do I. Um, I I recorded the rest of uh, of the video uh, without sound. <laughs> so here's another victory and a challenge, but one that um, I'm just gonna scrap and do another one. <laughs> I I shared up uh, some good stuff with you guys. We had a, maybe an exciting hand or two with match points. Uh, we ended uh, the hand with a good slam, but to be honest, it wasn't terribly interesting throughout. And you can see we saw some you know, kind of normal results at the end there that, uh, to be honest, I probably could have played a little better. So I'm glad we're scrapping this one so, uh, and I'm not sharing it with you. But you can see the first two boards we did see this week uh, were this one, the uh, four diamond bid, which I thought would be either this kind of average-ish result. And sorry, let me get to our results screen over here. And here you can see four diamonds was just average. And and the other one we knew was going to be bad because three clubs makes and two diamonds doesn't because I did something weird, right? So let's get back to another challenge. I'm just going to kind of snap my fingers. Go, guys. Okay, so... Played two quick boards there, and I probably could have done better on the first one for sure. I, I could have guessed the first one better. There was a there was a two way finesse on this first one. This last one, uh, board number two, four spades making seven. I opened one spade with this hand on the on the south there, and then I jump shifted to three hearts and corrected three no trump to four spades. Um, my partner didn't bid anymore, which I'm okay with. And, you know, they, they had the magical hand here, and I was able to take uh, 13 tricks. Uh, we'll hope that's enough for a chop. Uh, hopefully the robots didn't uh, bid too much more with that. But we're back. It is now, um, once again, Tuesday. <laughs> it's my second Tuesday, your first. Uh, here we are with boards number three and four. And we can see pretty good hand here for our, our board three. All right, 21. Just a normal two no trump bid, right? We open two no trump, and that's all systems on. So everything here is a nice Jacoby transfer, three spades. They will bid three no trump, and the question is, what do you do? What do you want to do? Make your choice. I'm going to make it quickly here for you guys, but pause if you need to. So on the other side of the table, Right. If if North, let's say, has a very flat hand and a four card major, they're the person that can decide to go against Stamen or not bid Stamen or not go for a major suit fit. From this side of the table, when we find a major suit fit, even though it's match points, we might be thinking, hey, no Trump pays more. You're going to make more tricks in that major suit way more often than not. And why did partner transfer? Well, they wanted to play spades if it was possible. So here we just correct the spades always, even with these flat hands. We let partner do the guessing in those spots as to what's right and what's wrong. All right, take a look at what we bought. Um, looks like... You know, we're probably we probably could have done well in both. A club lead in no trump would have would have possibly been really bad for us. You should be able to see that, right? Especially if we they give us the first club trick, right? If left hand opponent has ace jack something of clubs to our left a few times, that could be a lead that causes a lot of trouble. So we're very happy that we're in spades, and we can see that diamond suit is quite nice over there in the dummy. My play here, and what I really want to do relatively quickly, as quickly as I can, is draw Trump, right? I don't want to do anything but draw Trump. Notice I'm not afraid of anything on this deal. I know I have losers. I have a club loser. Can't get rid of it. We'll always lose one. I have a heart loser. Can't get rid of it. We'll always lose one, right? That's it. I just have to try not to lose a spade. Right, so here, I'm actually going to win this in dummy because it's not going to matter. I'm going to ditch the jack underneath it so I can put the jack of spades on the table. Here, if this wins, unlikely the robot usually likes to cover that. But if it won, we would now still be in the north hand to take this finesse again. It did not win. We will play a dime. I hope they're not rough in that. And now it's time to draw the rest of the trump. And here, we know they're breaking evenly. We draw the last trump. And now it's just knockout the losers right here we go we can unblock that one not that we need to we're going to have plenty of entries to both sides of the table rec rec recognize the diamond is good right so we don't have to pitch the diamond we can pitch a club instead but again take a look are we pitching any loser there no we already had a club loser <laughs> so there the seven of hearts um 
If the seven of hearts was good, we would have used it to pitch away that club, but it wasn't. You can see that there. And now we have our 10 tricks for 420, right? We would have made 450 at the spade finesse one. Happy about that one. And take a look. Um, club position wasn't going to be terrible for us in no trump. So if they did decide to play no trump, it would be better for them. But you know, that's not our decision to make, right? We're we're the ones that open a no trump. And if our partner shows some interest in playing in those major suits, there's usually a good reason. Picture a hand that partner just has two small hearts or maybe a singleton heart and just didn't know what else to do other than transfer and bid three no trump. Uh, another hand that would be a problem for our side, right? So make the right choice there. Get back to that major suit when partner shows an interest and we will be dancing in the right spot usually. All right, board number four, make your bid. What you doing with this hand? Three passes to you. I don't care if it's one passes, two passes, three passes, no passes. I'm opening this one no trump, and I'm happy about it. I have a very good 14. I think I could deal out thousands of 15-point hands that aren't close to as good as this. I treat it as 15 always. Even with a five-card major, this is the value of the hand. It is a very good 14 to 17. That's a good effective range to think about. And when I say a very good 14, I mean 14 with a good five card suit. When I have this, I will just always open one no trump. I upgrade that. Uh, 19, a good five card suit. I open two no trump, right? And that's the way we do it these days, right? Because that's what the hand is worth. So one no, pass three no. Love this because a lot of times they're going to lead a major. We hope it spades, right? Which it rates to be because of the length we have. Uh, here they just surprise us with a diamond lead, which we are also quite happy about. But watch this. Sometimes it might go diamond to the ace spade switch. That won't be too terrible for us either. Let's hope we're getting something like that here. Okay. So make your choices now. All right, what do you want to do with this hand? You know. The reason we open one no trump with good 14s, meaning 14s and five card suits, is these suits are usually sources of tricks for us and relatively easy sources of tricks to develop when they're this good. So what I want to do is cash the ace of spades. And I'm going to do this just in case I see the queen or the jack and maybe we're getting that uh, impossible dream where the queen jack just falls doubleton and we lose no spades. But when I see this, it divides you know, less than ideally for us. I'm just going to give up a spade now. And now we just hope it's breaking no worse than 3-2. And bingo, we have set up spades. Unfortunately, we haven't set up those diamonds just yet. Uh, if those diamonds were good, I would just be hopping up with this ace of clubs and taking a whole bunch of tricks. But they've done a very nice job of breaking their second best suit. We kind of wished it was hearts, right? Or just return some diamonds for us. But here they did get off to a nice switch of the club position. And that is our weakest spot. So take a moment and think about what, well, what should you be doing first of all? As far as not what you should be playing, but what should you be thinking about? For me, it's, it's, you're going to hear this again and again and again. It's winners, right? It's, it's what, what can I take right now? Right? I already have two winners in the bank right here. How many more do I have? Well, I have three spades. That's five. I have two hearts. That's six and seven. And I have the ace of clubs for eight. Is that my contract? It is not. Can I just rip off these winners? I can't. I need more tricks. So here, I can't just hop up with the ace of clubs and take my winners and think I'm going to be good. I need to develop one more trick. Could it be clubs? Unlikely, right? On, on, we don't even have the nine of clubs. This this spot, the spots here aren't that great for us. Uh, and diamonds is clearly a spot where we can create extra tricks. Is are they going to give us a chance to do that before they set up their own clubs? So here I'm going to play low. We're okay to surrender this. Maybe they switch. They don't. So here I'm also going to duck one more time because I can afford two. Because I still have only lost three tricks. And now, hopefully, hopefully, when we give up this diamond, they don't have any clubs left. Did we do it? Yes, we did. All right, so now we will take this king of spades. And we will be able to pitch away that heart. 
and we could you know we can take diamonds we can pitch away another diamond on this all we need to know is that we're claiming 600 on this hand and that was a nice way to go plus well defended by those robots on board four there um, just getting off to that nice club switch notice we delayed a hold up play here right so so, so many of you are familiar with the hold up play at trick one where you have ace third and they lead and you hold up twice and you win your ace here we just have to understand that sometimes we we will be doing that in the middle of a hand when they get off to a nice switch and notice here after the diamond opening lead great for us right we could have set up two diamond winners as well we set up two spade winners in the wash uh, as it turned out and we you know held out hope that they might continue those diamonds thinking they would uh they would create more tricks but great switch by them and notice uh if we see here once that happens uh we're just going to in fact let's go back and make sure yeah take a look there's our hold up play that's our success right there all right so the eight of clubs yeah the jack notice if they had the king queen they would likely have put the king on the table or not let it at all so here when this club gets played notice what's bad for us or i guess on this one they have already blocked clubs right so so now it didn't matter what we did because the queen of clubs is blocked over there but again if that's not happening we still need to duck this we don't know really we don't know we can trust this king of clubs that uh, uh that perfectly and also they still had a chance to switch here which would have been great for us as well and and again the big thing is knowing your winner count and knowing that you're not there yet but also your loser count is helpful as well Right? You have to know you can afford to duck this because you still have to lose a diamond also. So you can afford to duck this because you'll end with three losers in a case like this. And you're still able to surrender to that diamond to create your ninth trick. All right, guys, that was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed that. That is Tuesday in the books. Uh, and we will come back. Not too bad of a start Uh in a team game, we would like to just bring this card back to the table. Board two, again, I don't think they're going to be bidding a slam. I know uh, you guys didn't see me play that entire hand, but that's because of that mix-up I had in recording the uh, the first second time. Uh, but but here, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, we made a couple of good games on number three and number four, and we'll hope we keep this streak together. Take a look at what I'm leaving you with. Here's what we're starting hump day with on Wednesday. That's our 15-point hand. I think we know what we're going to be doing, but I will catch you tomorrow to confirm. See you soon, guys.